we gather together on this day to rededicate this stadium in memory of Ron Basavit, a man of faith and dedication, a good husband and father, a friend and mentor, a teacher, and a coach. His memory reminds us that you, our God, have given us our physical power in order that we may serve you joyously, helping one another, and by discipline and accord with the law of God, make our bodies fit for every good deed and work. You, our God, approve of recreation for the relaxation of our minds, the strengthening of our spirits, and the exercise of our bodies. Care of our bodies fosters mental well-being, and we more readily establish spirited and lasting relationships with those around us. Lord, today we sing your praises without ceasing. You rule over all things with wonderful order. You temper the cares and burdens of our work, and by giving us rest and healthy recreation, you refresh our weary bodies and minds. We call upon your kindness that this place, this place Ron Basevich Memorial Stadium, and its facilities will contribute to activities that renew the spirit and strengthen the mind and body. Grant that all who perform, compete, and gather here may find the enrichment of companionship and together offer you the praise that is your due. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. At this time, I'd like to introduce Congressman Chabot. Congressman Chabot. Thank you. It's really an honor to be here this afternoon, and my contribution was to get a flag uh, been flown over the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Uh, when we got that, my daughter is a uh, sophomore at, at Mother of Mercy, and last week they dedicated a gym, and I got a flag for them, and the Archbishop happened to be there, Archbishop Klarczyk, and we were talking before the ceremony, and the Archbishop said, you know, I'd like you to confirm something for me, if you would. I've always had in my mind that there's some guy that works at the Capitol building and, and sends these flags up, uh, or some flagpole, lets them sit up there for five minutes all day long, and let does this. And I said, Father, or Archbishop, actually, I said, I don't want to dash your uh, your imagination about how this happens, but they're not up there that long. So, <laughs> but it is truly an honor to be here today, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful occasion, it really is, because the family uh, of Mr. Basevich is here. Uh, I happened to play for LaSalle years ago, and, and, and Basevich was the head coach uh, at Roger Bacon at that time, and Tom Balaban's here, who was... Uh, the head coach at uh, Xavier High School at the time, which is truly an honor. And thank you very much uh, for letting us play a role. Uh, God bless each and every one of you. God bless your families. And yes, God bless America. Thank you very much. Before we get on with our ceremony, I'd like to recognize all the former players and coaches that are here this afternoon. When I announce your name, you can please step forward. Rich Craig, class of 67. Al Watson, captain, class of 55. Jim Brockman, co-captain, class of 64. Father Warren Zeisler. Mike Byrne, coach from 1969 to 73. Brother Gene Mayer, former athletic director. Jack Lear, assistant coach 63 to 67, head coach 74 to 73. Ken Hauk, a former captain 1959 and coach 65 to 69. Mike Butts, player 61 62, coach 1968. Coach Ken Waller, 66 to 72. 
Dave Kearney, Captain, 1954. Paul Merkel, Captain, 1974. Tim Foley, Captain, 1976. Al Roberts, Captain 1960. Harry Huxel, Captain 1976. Tony French, Captain 1971. Kevin Huxel, Coach, 78 to 83. Jim Huxel, Captain 1986. Father Donald Sudman, coach, to the stand. Chris Schillmeyer, captain, 1990. And one of Coach Basevich's most famous players, and one he's most proud of, Dave Foley. And also one of his players extraordinaire, Walt Reckers. Walter is in the stand. And also former principal, Father Jim Bach. Another former coach, Ron Hankey. And former captain, 1974, Dave Schildmeyer. And with no further ado, I'd like to introduce our master of ceremonies for this afternoon. He is a former coach at St. Xavier, a contemporary of Coach Basevich, and a very good friend of Coach Basevich. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Coach Tom Balaban. Thanks, Jim. Father, fathers, I should say, alumni of Roger Bacon, also of McNicholas. I have some friends out of McNick. I saw both of them when I came in. <laughs> and, uh, I'm very privileged to have a chance to be here today. Uh, I, they called me. I thought I was going to clean up the stadium after you all leave. And that's the jobs I've been getting lately since I'm unemployed. Also, I have notes, which I very seldom do. And I have a fast seven minutes before the game starts and Roger Bacon loses by forfeit. And uh, we want to follow the rules. I'm sure all of you are in accord with that. So I'm not going to take too much time. When I come in the stadium, I always think of one story and not wrong. But before I do that, being a coach myself, we always got to read the records of the coach, particularly if they're favorable. Now, I'm not a hesitant to do this because I'm not the only one that contributed to this record. <laughs> Although, I think I did my share. For your benefit, most of you know he coached for 43 years. And he had a record of 312, 70 losses, 14 ties. Actually, when he came to Bacon, he was here for 20 years. And in the 20-year tenure, he had 150 victories, 40 losses, and 9 ties. Actually, he had about 4 or 5 GCL champions. Everybody says, well, did you win any state champions? We didn't have the playoffs in those days. I'm sure if they would have had them, Brown would have won the world title. Uh, Brown was an excellent fellow, other than just a great coach. i got to tell you one quick story. I'm watching my watch here because they promised me a guest if I get off in seven minutes. <laughs> we came down here one time, and I had a couple of assistant coaches. We had 15 now. I only had two. We meet in the locker room, and in my locker, actually. And I said, uh, what are we going to do to upset Braun in this game we were playing? So we rented this stadium. And Braun was in there with his team, firing them up. I don't know why, but we were out here. We were scared to death. And I thought, well, let's do this. Let's sit on this side instead of that side over there that's mine. And if they want to get rid of it, they just push the hammer down. Father Allen had a fellow over there to get rid of the whole team. So anyway, Braun comes up. And what we did, we took this side of the stadium. This is really funny. Boy, you think of him a mild manner type dude. He about ready to punch us and everything else. He said, what are you doing over here? I said, Bron, we are the proprietors. I learned that word before I came down. We are the proprietors of this stadium, and we can choose to sit where we want. And we chose this side. You can go over there on that populated side 
over there with the three kids throwing stones down on you. <laughs> and uh, Ron got pretty upset. So, and eventually we went back. And we expected he'd beat us pretty fast. And the assistant coach said, I wish you wouldn't have irritated him. <laughs> that had nothing to do with it. Ron was very, very competitive. I'm not going to waste your time. I would like to introduce the family and move along with this program. I could talk for hours about Ron. My stories are all true. I, I don't know about some of the others, but I don't like Gooch and some of these fellows back here. <clears throat> I'm not scared. My voice breaks. And you can see now, like I am, and that happens to me. Let's introduce the Basevich family. I always considered her the head coach. And I think she's one of the nicest ladies I've ever met in my life. She's always been a big booster of mine, win or lose. Not like some people, win or tie. Win or lose, she would speak to me, and I always appreciated that, and she'd hug me and make me feel right at home. This is Helen Basevich.
you, Bill. Thank you, Father Roger, Bubs, and everybody in the Roger Bacon family. Uh, the Basevich family really uh, thanks you from deep, deep down in our heart for a great tribute to Ron. Uh, he was a teacher and coach for many of you, but to us, he was loved as a husband, a father, and a grandfather. And uh, I think this is a great uh, tribute to him and to his career. Just the same as the coaches award at the uh, Sports Stag has been a tribute to his coaching career also. Uh, we greatly appreciate this. I know in 1954, Father Andrew came to Illinois and uh, gave him a challenge to come here to Cincinnati and create a football dynasty. And I think in the 20 years that he was here, he did do that. And a lot of players walked out of Bacon as men of Bacon. I was fortunate to play on his first undefeated season in 1959, and uh, I had, had to experience him both as a coach and a father, and I think I was glad we won all the games. <laughs> also want to congratulate Coach Starkey and the Roger Bacon players for bringing a 5-0 record to this great game and a great weekend. Thank you, Barney. Once again, congratulations, Mrs. Basevich, Barney, Michael, Susan, Jennifer. At this time, we invite everyone to please rise for the playing of the national anthem. Testing, one, two, testing. 
number 34.
third. First contact was made by number 78, Josh Snow, 31. Balls after Roger Bacon, 46 yard line. Number eight, Kevin Hepp. 
Larry Cooper. Number 30, the first down at their own 30 yard line. Ready? We'll be announcing the number shortly. Split the pot and winning the 
Thank <laughs> you. 